The Nintendo Switch is five years old and already it's established itself as the ultimate collector console. In addition to having new original games, the Nintendo Switch has also become quite attractive to port a bunch of titles that have been made in the past 20 years or later. And in those five years, the Nintendo Switch library has exploded to over 4,000 games, with about half of them being physical titles, not including those weird download in a box games. As such, the Nintendo Switch has become quite attractive to collectors, some even going for complete sets. But Let's face it, with the arrival of Xbox Game Pass and Sony's new premium subscription service, the Nintendo Switch might be the last console with a physical first philosophy. Welcome to Retronomics, the series that follows price trends in video games. And if you like this type of content, make sure you're subscribed so you'll never miss an episode and leave a comment on what console you want me to forecast next. Today, we're taking a look at the Nintendo Switch, the most modern console that I've discussed on the series. I've discussed in the past the risk of collecting for a console that is still actively being produced. It's completely possible for a developer to reprint a game if it becomes popular. So it really is a gamble if you want to buy a game for the current generation if it's over MSRP. With GameStop still hanging on, it's possible to find games for under MSRP, but even so, some Switch games are difficult or even impossible to find in the wild. Limited print games are big business, and as a result, some of the more popular indie titles like The Messenger or Celeste are going for well over $100 because they were only sold for a limited time and may not see another re-release ever again. I forecasted 21 Nintendo Switch games that my subscribers suggested for me in my community tab. And I tried to add some variety to this list because if I only wanted to focus on the expensive games, they'd be all limited print titles and the price doesn't really change on those. All of the games on this list are North American titles with complete in-box prices from PriceCharting.com. I also take a look at eBay sold listings and their current availability to determine if the prices will go up, down, or stay the same. So let's get into some prices. First up is Stern Pinball Arcade, and I really didn't think that I'd have a pinball collection on my expensive Switch game bingo card, but here we are. The used value of this game dropped to its lowest in 2020 and has been creeping up ever since, mainly because of licensing issues with pinball in general. The main draw of the physical version is that it contains all of the tables offered instead of having to buy them piecemeal on the eShop. Also, there is a rumor that this might be pulled from the eShop, so that is causing the title to rise in value in the future. I'd put this as a priority and consider it before it gets way too over MSRP. Layton's Mystery Journey is part of the Professor Layton series, but it's a port of the 3DS title with all of the DLC available on the cartridge. While it might be difficult to find the game at its original MSRP, Amazon did have it new for $50, but it's not sold by Amazon and the main picture shows a PEGI rating instead of the ESRB. So proceed with caution, or if you want to take a gamble, it's available online at GameStop. They don't always ship CIB, but it might be worth a shot. Anyway, keep an eye out for it, as there aren't too many available for what price charting has it listed for on eBay. Guacamelee 1 2 Punch Collection contains both Guacamelee games, and these were critically acclaimed games originally launching on the PlayStation 3, then pretty much every other platform after that. Having a physical version, which is also available on the PlayStation 4 by the way, contains both games, and it's a pretty good deal. Despite being released only three years ago, 1 2 Punch is already out of print and steadily climbing in value, with some sold listings going for almost $80. There's always a chance for a reprint during the console's life cycle, so I would decide if these two 10-year-old games are worth the price. Not all Switch games are expensive, and Sonic Mania Plus is a prime example. Sonic Mania was a welcome return to the 2D Sonic formula with new levels designed by Christian Whitehead. 
The game initially launched as a digital only title, but a year later the physical version with additional content was released. I would probably buy this now since it's a really good game if you're a Sonic fan and this might be a game that down the line will vary wildly in price. It's already difficult to find it new since there is a version with it packed in with Sonic Team Racing, so consider it now while it's still inexpensive or take a gamble on GameStop for under $20. Speaking of inexpensive games, Super Mario 3D All-Stars was supposed to be a limited affair. Released at the tail end of the 35th Mario anniversary, Mario 3D All-Stars includes Mario 64, Mario Sunshine, and Mario Galaxy. And Mario Sunshine even has the capability to use the GameCube controller for those analog triggers for managing Flood. This is a pretty good collection on the Switch, although it would have been nice if Mario 64 was a remake, but Nintendo Nintendo knows how to manage expectations. I don't see this game jumping crazy high because you can still buy it new at Best Buy despite it being discontinued. Hollow Knight has remained consistent in value for a while given its popularity, and this will probably be a game that is sought after once Silk Song is released and when the Switch is finally decommissioned since it includes all of the DLC on the cartridge. I know, it's a pretty novel concept that apparently is never the case with modern games, but I digress. Hollow Knight Physical is a great buy for the Switch if you like these types of Metroidvania games. Astral Chain is another game that has been consistent in price ever since it was released. This is made by Platinum, the same people behind Bayonetta and Nier Automata. This game was super popular when it came out and it's critically acclaimed and the good news is, is that you still can probably find this locally at a game store if those still exist where you are. Looking at GameStop listings, there's a couple of stories that carry it nearby me, so maybe I'll consider buying this in the near future as it's probably going to be a game that I'll kick myself for not buying when it was at this price. With Bayonetta 3 on the horizon, it's only natural that other titles in the series will see a bump in price and Bayonetta 2 is no exception, especially when you can't buy Bayonetta 2 new. You can buy the first one and the third one, but Bayonetta 2 physical is currently a no-go. At least for now. The last time Bayonetta got a huge bump was when she was announced for Smash and Nintendo actually reprinted the Wii U version. As it stands now, copies of Bayonetta 2 are going for well over what price charting has it listed as and without the Bayonetta 1 digital code. So consider waiting on this one to see if Nintendo either reprints it or the popularity subsides and the price drops to a much more reasonable level. Diablo 3 Eternal Edition contains Diablo 3, Reaper of Souls, and Rise of Necromancer expansions all in one cart, so it's pretty much the definitive Diablo 3 experience. If you're a fan of Diablo 3, that is. A lot of people didn't really like the departure from the beloved Diablo 2, but in my opinion, it's still a fun experience. This game is still available new from GameStop, so I don't think that the price is going to go too wild, especially since Activision Blizzard has been in the gamer doghouse for the past couple of years. Now that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is out, some people might want to check out its prequels and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is not available physically from retailers new anymore and as a result it's jumped with newcomers getting into the series. Again, it is possible that Nintendo could reprint it along with the Torna expansion, but I would wait to see if the price drops a bit after the hype dies down. Minecraft Story Mode is available on multiple platforms and it's most expensive on the Nintendo Switch. This is a Telltale game series and since Telltale no longer exists in its original form, you can expect that this game will probably never get a reprint. I would recommend getting it if it was a Switch exclusive, but the complete edition exists on all the platforms all the way back to the PlayStation 3, so keep an eye on it as it probably won't spike wildly in the future and there are still plenty of copies available on eBay, although not for what price charting has it listed for. Just be patient. 
Remember the Toys to Life craze? Well, it's starting to see a resurgence of sorts because it's old enough that people are nostalgic for it. Skylanders Imaginators for the Nintendo Switch was the last hurrah for the series and now they go for quite the pretty penny. I don't know a lot about Skylanders, but the game is pretty much useless without the portal and the figures, so maybe unless you're a fanatic, sit this one out unless you find a ton at a garage sale or something. Celeste is an indie darling made by Maddie, who is also the creator of Towerfall. And Celeste is a simple yet challenging platforming game with a great story and a banging soundtrack. But it's also a limited run release, so if you didn't buy this when it was available for open pre-order, you're going to have to shell out a substantial amount of money for a copy. But it's almost half the price on the PlayStation 4. But all the DLC is available, and the good news is, is that most limited run print games don't fluctuate too much, so maybe you'll actually be able to save up for it. Speaking of limited run games, Mary Skelter 2 contains Mary Skelter Nightmares, which is unlockable either by beating the second game first or just downloading it off of the eShop. Either way, both games are on the disc, which is something that I forgot to mention in my PlayStation Vita follow-up video. Anyway, this is readily available new on Amazon from Limited Run Games, so I would suggest snagging it now before it suddenly goes out of print. It'll Do 2 is similar to Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, and it's a pretty cool game for the Nintendo Switch. This one came out early in the life cycle, and it came with a bunch of goodies like a manual and stickers, and the prices remain pretty consistent with some small dips and rises over time. I don't think that this will become super expensive in the future, but you never know these days. And if you're interested in Zelda and you like similar games like that, I suggest giving it a try. Kanemari Damasi Reroll was a game that I made a video on a while back when it spiked wildly because it was rumored that this was a limited release. And that wasn't the case, it was reprinted and that drove the price down dramatically. Now it's available complete for less than $15. So if you're looking for a fun game on the Nintendo Switch, add this to your collection. Horizon Chase Turbo is a spiritual successor to OutRun, so if you're a fan of arcade racers like that, this is for you. There's a special edition and a regular edition, but the only difference is the cover and the little postcard that comes with it, so you can decide if that's worth the small price difference. This is another game that was rumored to be in short supply, but then the regular edition was released, so the prices remain fairly consistent, so keep an eye out. Ikaruga for the GameCube is pretty pricey, so when it came out for the Nintendo Switch, I thought that it would drop in price, but now it turns out that the Switch physical version was sold directly from Nicholas's shop, and now it's pretty hard to find. So I don't think that we'll see a drop in price anytime soon, because like with most limited print titles, the price just gets set and it stays there because most people selling it know that collectors are prepared to shell out the big bucks for these physical titles. So save up and keep an eye out. Darksiders War Mastered Edition probably would have been largely ignored if it wasn't for a crazy misprint. Basically, they forgot to include the red switch banding that's on every game, so the spine is black and the switch logo on the top left corner is just the white icon on a black background. As such, the misprint is going for double what the corrected version is going for. I don't like using variants in my videos because it's just a cosmetic preference, but this is just one that did cause a stir. The misprint doesn't go for a lot of money, so if that's your thing, it might be something to pick up now rather than later in case it becomes really collectible. Wild Guns Reloaded is a re-release of Wild Guns for the Super Nintendo, which is crazy expensive. Having an official re-release didn't really slow the price down of the SNES cartridge, but at least you can play it on the Switch and for way less than what it's going for on the Super Nintendo. It's still pretty much the same game, so if you're interested in a 30-year-old game on a modern platform, you can't go wrong with this one. 
Shantae and the Seven Sirens is a limited run games release, but it's not as expensive as the other Shantae games for the Nintendo Switch. Shantae has been a cult favorite forever, and when you combine that following with a limited print company, they're going to hold their value. Seven Sirens is pretty inexpensive compared to something like Pirate's Curse, which is kind of interesting to see the prices so inflated considering that these games were open pre-order. $450 for a sealed version of Pirate's Curse? Yikes. So there you go, 21 Nintendo Switch games forecasted, and as you can see, it's kind of a toss up as to where the prices will go. As I said in the beginning of the video, the more expensive titles were the ones that were limited from the start, and those will likely remain expensive. But when it comes to retail releases, I think it's going to be tough to speculate what the next Panzer Dragoon Saga or Little Samson will be, given the way that the Wii, the DS, and the 3DS went. I'm going to assume that the super sought after game for the Nintendo Switch that was available in retail will be some shovelware title like My Riding Stables Life with Horses or some dumb thing like that. Even Turbo for the Wii U is getting pricey. But for now, you should collect what you want to play, and if you do have deep enough pockets to afford to buy every game new for the Nintendo Switch right now, one, can I have some of that money? And two, you're probably going to want to try to grab the limited print releases because those are the ones that are likely to increase in value over the time, especially the ones that are from obscure limited print game companies. It is really cool to have a console with physical titles spanning over the past 20 years and the portability of the Nintendo Switch makes it even more desirable for gamers. But the good thing too is that the Switch is region free so if you want to import games for cheaper you should probably do that too. I do think that this might be the last console that people will be able to traditionally collect for. Despite most games requiring patches, the majority of the games still have the bulk of the content on the cartridge and that's becoming more and more rare for the PlayStation and Xbox series. Sure, there will still be smaller games that fit on the disc for those systems, but they also fit on the Nintendo Switch cartridge. So what's the better option here? Well save for that Nintendo Switch tax. But let me know what you think. Is the Nintendo Switch the final collector console? Are you going for a complete set? Leave it down below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with those who might find it interesting. It's the best way to help the channel out. And if you're new here and like this content, consider subscribing for more. You can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Snicktendo. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.